What is up? This is your boy Stanky Socks for another, what, The Struggle Producer Journal. This is episode two. Um, today, what is going on for my personal list is I just got done um, doing the review of Double Barrel, which is Marco Polo and Torre. Um, a pretty solid album. Most, most indeed, is pretty solid. I gave it, I think, what, three stinky socks on my website. You'll check it out. I'm trying to get these reviews up. Um, just to give, like I said, give people value when they come to my website. Because everybody ain't trying to buy beats. That being said, um, what, and listening to this album, it got me to thinking about some things. And the thing it got me to think about is with type beats. And what I mean with type beats are, is as a producer... What if you don't make tight beats, meaning you don't make a Drake type beat or a little Ur Uzi Vert type beat or you know a Takashi Six Nine type of beat? Hell, you don't even make a Jay Dilla type beat or a Madlib type beat. You just kind of are more trying to you know cultivate your style and trying to make some some really dope ass shit that you know like I I, I know in the tight beat culture is more about you're supposed to, as a producer, especially an online producer, you're supposed to be able to make a all kinds of different tracks for whatever the situation and the scenario may be, instead of being like in the old days or you know old school in the '90s where you know okay, a Timberland track is a Timberland track, a Neptune's track is a Neptune's track. Premier, even his beats today sounds like a premier beat. You know it's a premier beat when it comes on. It's just, you know, the drums, how things is chopped, Pete Rock. Um, hell, even Mad Lib. You know a Mad Lib track, and the difference between a Mad Lib track and an Alchemist track. And I, I guess to me it's like, especially when you post your stuff on like a beat store, it you can get lost in the crowd or even on YouTube when you're posting something up you can get lost in the crowd if you just make something that's different and for me if I had to sit there and explain what a stinky socks beat or the kind of beats that I make I would have to say it's minimalistic I try not to add a whole lot of instruments I think when I was a younger I tried to add everything and I want to add everything and every sample and every drum and layer up everything like I was Dr. Dre but look, I don't have that talent nor the patience like Dr. Dre. As I got older and I've been making beats, I've been trying to make sure everything is simple. You know, like when I know something is done, I just know, okay, it, some songs I may use three tracks. Some songs I may use four or five. Some I use eight, but most of the time if I'm doing any layering or I have multiple instruments, it's more based on drums than it is actual like maybe piano chords or you know um, synths or something like that because I just kinda wanna keep it simple but I want my shit to bang I want the drums to bang out loud like I want that to really stand out like when I want it like for my namesake my namesake I'm stinky socks I want them shits to stank I want them it kinda have that kind of feel and ain't no tight beat for that. It ain't nobody like in that kind of sense. Like it's not people that don't make you know banging ass drums. It's a lot of people make banging ass drums. I just got done listening to this, and Marco Polo, like very underrated producer. Um, go check out his stuff. Um, definitely throughout the years, um, he's been making a lot of bangers for a lot of different people. Um, like I said, this was a dope album. I gave it what three and a half stinks, but um that's what I kinda think about like when you're on like a beat store or you're posting something up and it's like what if you don't fit that style like you know for instance okay you have on beat stars what MF Doom style like are we talking about MF Doom as him being a producer and the stuff that he would make or are we talking about stuff that he would rap over you know as you know and he rapped over many different producer stuff whether it's Danger Mouse some um, RG, you know, RGA D2, Mad Lib, of course, uh, Dilla, and, uh, Forteca, a lot of different, his, his vocals have been over a lot of different beats over the years, and even like, you know, remixes that you see on YouTube. 
So like, how do you say what well, something is a type? Like I said, that's what I kind of feel like that's where the frustration is a part of a part of the listening. Some of it could be keywords, like you know, what are the right keywords that I need to get that in. I guess those numbers and just because you got the numbers it doesn't always equal out to the sales but I guess that's I guess that as a producer is trying to I want to grow as a producer and I want to style like when somebody is you know they hear my stuff they know that's stinky socks and it doesn't matter what platform it is on, whether it's on BeatStar, whether it's Airbit, whether it's SoundCloud, SoundClick, uh, AutoMac. Um, right now, me and AutoMac has some issues. Um, I made an unofficial Drake um, remix, and they took it down. And, and they're killing my remix things, because remixes are things that I am known for, is to do remixes, and I'm having issues with them in YouTube right now. So... I'm going to have to do something with that. Maybe have to slow down Drake's vocals. You know, I might have to do that. But that being said, um, I just kind of feel that as a producer, like just trying to get noticed and stand out. Like we're told to, you know, you got to stand out and get noticed and do those things. And you can do those things and still have the frustration because as a producer, we're wearing many hats. We have to not only make the beats, um, we're making connections with different MCs and different artists. Um, we're also on social media, so we're on the hat of being a you know content creator, but also a social media manager. And sometimes that does get frustrating, and especially you feel like that. Like I said, I, I've been feeling like that, just like listening to this CD. That it's hard when you put a type or something, you're putting somebody in a box saying, well, this is what I understand. That's what pop that's popular. But is that the only type of rappers that are out there, you know, buying, you know, are they buy those are the only ones buying music are the ones that are buying like Drake type beats or something like that. And so if everybody is going here and they're the ones that's, you know, and it's kind of like I said, that. You don't want to hate somebody's hustle because what they doing, they doing what they got to do and you trying to do what you got to do. But at the same time, it's like, feels like, I, I, I don't, you know, you kind of feel it. You feel like, what am I doing wrong? What could I do better? Do I follow the trend of everybody else or do I go this way? Like for me, like when I think about making music or producing music. I take the approach of like being locked in a room with just a, a few sounds. Let's say you got a couple of records, you got some Game Boy games, you, and this is what you have. So you kind of just like, you kind of forced, say, look, I got to make this work and to come out with something that's a banger at the same time. And because, like I said, if we're all, you know, sometimes you don't want to just be buying sample CDs and all that kind of stuff. You just kind of want to cultivate what's in, what's in the house or what's on my laptop. What do I have that I hadn't went through yet? And just try to build and craft your style or the way that you produce as opposed to do I follow the crowd? And I think that's one of the things for sure. You know, do I follow the crowd? and I get that easy buck or do I craft and do what I do and maybe hopefully one day somebody says you know what I'm jumping on that and, and, and I, I guess that's the thing and that's what I would say with this struggling producer journal today it's more about do I go with the trend of everybody else or do I stay true to what I am and what I make and try to give people a diff, you know, something different. And I, and I'm guessing, I'm, I'm guess I'm asking y'all at home that are watching also, um, do, do you struggle with that? Do you struggle with like trying to? Do I follow the trend of everybody else and go with the tight beat and I put this or I'm this I'm that, or do you try to venture to where nobody else is gone, with the hopes of you being the trendsetter or the the one that changes up everything, the, the game changer, so to speak. Uh, with that being said, this is ending the producer, the struggling producer journal, episode two. This might be the last one. I'm going to sit there and tell you that. I might tell you that next week when I do three. Or hell, I might put three up tomorrow. 
that being said, thank you for watching this video. My name is Ms. Stanky Socks. Peace out.